Bray Gang, and uh, <laughs> if you guys already know what we're about to do, you probably saw from the title, we're about to get into this Germany thing again, okay? Now, um, I've been browsing the internet, but I kind of wanted to just browse the internet with you guys and go ahead and check and see if a lot of these facts and stuff are, are true. Uh, I found a website, and it has a lot of information on it. I wanted to go through and read a lot of it, kind of like look up some stuff and just kind of go exploring, kind of a random video that I decided to put together. But if you guys haven't already, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. Let's go ahead and dive those deep into this thing and see exactly what Germany has to offer. And I know a lot of you guys are like, dang, like, why are you so infatuated with Germany? Germany this, Germany that. Well, aside from me moving out there uh, in the next few years, I uh, am trying to speak the language and I also check out a lot of you guys' music. So I'm like, well, let me check out more of the culture and dive even deeper you know so I thought that'd be pretty cool anyways I will show you guys what I'm looking at so we have this website here it's the odysseyonline.com and they basically cover the 20 big differences between America and Germany so we're gonna go, go, go through this and see exactly if this is what we've seen before so number one says people generally aren't loud in Germany which is pretty interesting so it says the biggest American stereotype in the book is that being over uh, other than being overweight is that Americans are loud now I am a loud motherfucker okay if you meet me in person I talk like you're like maybe like 400 meters away from me when you're like, you know, one meter away from me. I don't know. You gotta, it takes some getting used to because I'm a loud motherfucker. Uh, it also doesn't help that I have my, my audio on max whenever I react to videos. So it's probably killing my hearing. And uh, whenever I talk, I feel like I'm talking normally, but it's actually like super incredibly loud. Um, like for me right now, I feel like this is whispering, but I've decided to kind of like balance shit out. So anyways, um... Americans tend to be very loud in public spaces when there is no need to be loud. So if you want to blend in well in Germany, don't be loud. Speak quietly and you will have no problem looking like a local. I highly doubt that I'll be able to be not loud, okay? Germany doesn't have strict open container laws, which means you can walk around and drink beers and not get in trouble. As a 20 year old studying there with some of my best friends, as according to this guy, this is this dude's blog, the open container leniency was always a favorite of mine. Regardless, you usually won't see many drunks out roaming the streets. Germans tend to hold their alcohol better than most, but don't be surprised if you see people walking around drinking wine straight out of the bottle. They're probably quite happy. Of course, that's dope. This is like the wine he was talking about right here. Sorry for all the ads, there's ads on this video and stuff like that, and it's probably mad annoying. Anyways, milk isn't refrigerated in Germany. This still perplexes a lot of people to this day, so he said it perplexes him to this day, but for some reason, Germans don't refrigerate their milk. If you go to a grocery store, you'll see the milk sitting out on the shelf with things like bread and rice. The shelf life of milk is much higher than the milk we get in America, so that is the benefit of the room temperature milk. Sometimes milk can last up to three months, quite different from the three weeks we have to drink our milk in America. I was told that you have like exactly one week to drink your milk before it goes bad. And typically you have like between, I'd say about five and seven days to drink your milk. I mean, if it's, especially if it's whole milk, you know, now if it's almond milk, then yeah, it takes about a month or two for it to go bad. So if that's the kind of milk you're talking about, then yeah, I understand. But if it's like regular milk, you guys are wild, bro. So it says, don't cross the street when the pedestrian light is red. I, I've seen this in a lot of videos that I've reacted to. Uh, it says, there's a saying in Germany called red man, dead man. <laughs> it's taught to German children when they're growing up and going to school on their own and learning to understand traffic lights. I have never been reprimanded for crossing the street when it is red, but I know plenty of people who have. It isn't uncommon for a German to scold you if you walk across when you shouldn't. I think that's what those types of Germans you guys call Almond, <laughs> Almon, Almon. Um, it's especially frowned upon if you cross illegally in front of a child because you're teaching them bad manners. Crossing it shows a red man uh, means you can become a dead man. Uh, wait, crossing when it shows a red man means you can become a dead man. That's pretty crazy, a little extreme, but. Hey man, I guess uh, <laughs> I will make sure not to cross any streets when the light's red. But you guys were also saying too that it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, especially all my German homies out there, like you're like, okay, like, I mean, we can cross. You just gotta be tactful with it. It just seems like people are definitely with that snitching shit out there. <laughs> and I hope that's not the case, but that's what it seems like. They're like, I saw that individual crossing across the street, crossing the street when the light was red. Like, yeah. That shit's crazy. Sales tax is already included in the prices. Now, this is something I appreciate with almost every country aside from America. America has these bitch ass prices, bro. It's so stupid. For instance, if I show you my iPhone, you could buy this iPhone for $1,399.99. 
plus tax. Am I supposed to figure that the fuck out? Come on, give me the damn price up front so I can just pay and walk the hell out. Like, literally, you get to the cash register in America and you'll have a water jug and the water jug will be $1.99. You get up to the cash register, it's like, that'll be $3.14. And I'm like, bitch, <laughs> what? I pulled out exact change, $1.99. False advertising. They need to change that shit because it's so annoying. If anybody could change anything about America, it would definitely be having the taxes included in the prices. That's what I definitely appreciate about Europe and Asia too, they include the taxes in the price. Um, so this man actually, this, this blogger here, he lived in California where the taxes are stupid high. But look, he says, I've lived in California my whole life, moving to Germany, and I have become accustomed to California's atrocious sales tax. One of the best things about Germany is that the sales tax is already worked into the price. If you buy some Ritter Sport chocolate for $1.69, you will only pay one euro and 69 cents. It makes it very nice to not be able to count out your money before you ever get to the cashier. That's pretty dope. Uh, so here's all the stuff here. Germany is very cash oriented country. And I definitely, uh, through a lot of videos I've watched, I've seen that to be true as well. Uh, it's very important, I think, for any of the people that are watching this video that do decide to go traveling to bring cash with you. Just bring cash with you. If you don't have cash with you, just bring some cash with you because that's, that's definitely going to be a thing, all right? Um, there's no such thing as one euro and two euro bills. Uh, the euro currency uses coins and for the one and two euro, unlike uh, the US where a lot a lot of times our change goes unused. Coins in Europe and Germany are used frequently. Your pockets might get a little bit heavier with the extra coins, but sometimes you can have a fortune without even knowing it. That's actually pretty cool. So it's almost like, I think we used to have, like I think we have a dollar coin over here in America that nobody uses because we all use like our cards and stuff now. Matter of fact, cash is becoming quite scarce out here in America now. Like everybody uses like credit cards. Like there's seldom places that take like, that are s exclusively cash. It gets very rare here uh, because you know, I don't know, modern society and shit. If a restaurant serves beer on tap, they are required to let you use the bathroom. Now, I, uh, let's look into this. So he says, I haven't been able to find the definite law that says this is true, but many people who I've spoken to verify this. I, but I do know that I've never been denied access to a restroom in an establishment where they serve beer. That comes in quite handy when you can't find a public restroom or don't want to pay to use one, which leads me to my next point, uh, which would be some places charge you to use the restroom. Now we've seen this in almost every culture German video I've reacted to, so we don't need to have to go too much into this. It's, it's, it's honestly for the betterment and the upkeeping of the public bathrooms because a lot of people, at least in America, um, if, you, if there's a public bathroom, people tend to splatter blast all over the toilet, leave it a mess, they don't flush, they leave like their germs all over the place and the staff that cleans the bathroom half ass cleans it so people getting all kinds of STIs and um, staff infections and all that kind of shit because the bathroom's just atrocious. So paying 50 cents to use the bathroom. While at first I thought it was very weird, I see why it is the way it is. So that's pretty cool. Um, so people eat at restaurants for hours. Bro, that's the same as here. So in America, we're used to eating our meals quickly. Now, I, I do not agree with this man. I don't agree with this man. I eat, well, I eat my food fast. So I do agree with him, but I don't stay in a restaurant like for just like, five minutes I, I normally talk right like you go to a restaurant to socialize you go there you eat you socialize otherwise like could be eating that damn fast and not like you're in and out you might as well go home you know like the fuck so anyways he's i'm gonna try to see what his reasoning is he says that's why fast food is so common throughout our the country however when germans go out and eat at the restaurant they don't feel the need to hurry meals are an opportunity to eat lots of food have some drinks and enjoy your company for hours to, on end and i agree with that that is my mentality like what the fuck this man don't know how to eat that's all it is the the wait staff doesn't hurry up the customers for the turnaround profit they simply keep serving until the customers leave this is very nice because you don't feel the need to rush out of the restaurant unfortunately if you're looking for a spot at a crowded restaurant the host can't give you a time estimate uh, of a table when it'll be ready which I always thought was weird whenever I went to a restaurant and I'm like, okay, I really want to eat here, but it's completely packed. So how long should I come back, you know, until it won't be packed? Like, oh, about an hour and a half, two hours. And I'm like, how do they know these times? Like in an hour and a half when I come back, will it still be packed? Like, 
will it be empty before like i don't understand what the process is but i guess that's not for me to decide right um all i can say is I, i'm definitely not like that people park their cars on the curbs now we definitely got into this in my last video and i was like what the hell bro uh, and this man explains it hundreds of years ago medieval German cities were designed for foot traffic and horse and buggies not cars This creates some tight spaces for cars to fit into nevertheless Germans were able to make it work and can park a vehicle in nearly any spot It's quite impressive So don't be surprised or alarmed when you see cars parked on curbs or drive over them like it's not a big deal That's y'all tires at fault not mine. <laughs> okay there's no such thing as free refills. Ooh, yeah, I noticed that. That's also in Korea, too. I was in Korea, and I tried to get a, a refill, and everybody fucking yelled at me, jumped, lunged at me like I, sh I shot somebody. I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm, I'm a free refill. They're like, no free refill. No. I'm like, oh, shit, that's crazy. So one of the saddest things about living in Germany is that there are no free refills at restaurants or soft drinks. You can usually choose either a small drink around... 0.3 liters or a large drink around 0.5 liters uh, depending on your level of thirst but be sure to uh, pace yourself so you don't run out of your drink before you finish your meal that makes sense so in america i'm pretty sure for a lot of those that have been there are free refills if you get water you can drink water until you pass out like that's free but apparently it's uh crazy oh what so number 13 is very interesting it says asking for tap water is impolite Germany, is this true? Let me know in the comments down below. Since we're on the topic of uh, restaurant taboos, it's important to know that water isn't provided for free if you ask. Not only will the waiter think you are crazy if you ask for tap water, he will likely bring out a bottle of water that you will end up paying for. If you want regular water, be sure to ask for still water. Otherwise, you will get sparkling water with carbonation in it that is not delicious. <laughs> That's my opinion. Okay, the Ger German people love it. This guy does not like carbonated water. I'm not really a big fan of carbonated water myself. I want cold, flat water. I do not like that sparkling shit. Like, that's not me. <laughs> Soft drinks do not come with ice, but I honestly don't think that you need ice with cold drinks if they're already cold. It's, it, 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 it's like, it, it, it fucks with the disparity in your drink, and it honestly dilutes your water when you throw ice in there. But so it makes sense. In true American fashion, I love a little bit of soda with a lot of uh, with a lot of my ice. So this is what this guy is saying here. I didn't say that shit. Unfortunately, ice cubes are not common in Germany or Europe in general. You can ask for ice in your drink, and if you are fortunate, you will be given two or three cubes in the drink. Don't say I didn't warn you. Now I'm not really looking for cubes in my damn drink. I don't really I don't put ice in my water at all, bro. I don't unless it is scalding hot outside and the water is lukewarm. I'm gonna get something to shock my body back into like, you know, some kind of chilly, you know, fashion. Always address an officer formally. Okay, so this is a bit more of a fun fact than something that will shock people. In German, you'll ad you address people using either the familiar du form or the formal se form. Um, it is illegal to speak to a police officer and not use the proper se form. I learned this the hard way in uh, one of my first weeks in Germany. I was coming home from my fencing class and saw policemen scaling the wall up to my house. They immediately started speaking to me in German and I panicked. Thankfully, I'd been taught a few days before about this law, so I addressed them using the proper si. If you need to speak to an officer, just ask, Sprechen Sie English, and they will likely be able to help you out. So, do you get arrested for not addressing an officer formally? Is that a thing for real? I did not know that. Um, okay, this is another thing, man. Germans take their drinks very seriously. When toasting glasses, called prosting, be sure to make eye contact. Not doing so is said to bring seven years of bad sex, and nobody wants that. <laughs> oh, I already know what I'm titling my video. <laughs> if you don't make eye contact while cheering, you'll have bad sex. <laughs> wow, that is insane. I did not know that. That's pretty crazy. Dogs are allowed at most public places. I actually did hear about this in one of the videos that I reacted to, so we don't really have to get into that too much, but long story short, uh, you know, restaurants where people would be like, yo, what the fuck, what's your dog doing here? Like, that's common in Germany. In Deutschland, you can bring your dog anywhere, which is pretty cool. Most stores are closed on Sundays. We already went through that, so you guys don't, I don't really have to break that down too much, but for my people that are new to the channel, basically, if you ever do move to Germany, um, it's a quiet day on Sundays, so you will not be making noise or nothing. Stores will be like, closed and everything minus the airport so uh 
airports will be open obviously the stores inside of airports will be open but everywhere else like local markets and general grocery stores those will all be closed on sundays because it's a day of rest a day of silence recycling is taking very seriously what well, my bad recycling is taken very seriously um throwing away garbage in germany is a science instead of your generic recycling bin they offer free glass brown glass and a variety of other options also they have machines that pay you for recycling so uh, if you guys want to learn more on that i can go ahead and get into that later germans are not scary one of the unfortunate german stereotypes is that germans are scary and rude this is not the case at all. Unfortunately, this belief stems from the fact that German culture is very different from American culture. Germans aren't rude. They just don't see the need for useless chit chat. That's true. I've actually talked to a lot of you guys on my Discord and you guys made it clear like we're not with the small talk. We want to jump into genuine conversation. So we're not going to speak to you unless you genuinely have something heartfelt to say. And yeah, I mean... In America, it starts off as small chatter, like, you know, it's banter, nothing serious. And then eventually enough of those conversations equivocate to a genuine conversation. And then you develop a friendship and whatnot. So do you guys just dive nose deep into a serious conversation or do you guys have small conversations at all? Because here it says you guys don't. Um, they aren't scary. They just have their, a certain way of doing things. While living in Germany, uh, this guy learned that many things that he knew about Germany were false. The Germans are lovely people and Germany will always be considered a second home. Now, I cannot wait to go to Germany on that note. Um, I know I talked forever, but we did learn a lot from this website and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know, I'm kind of curious as to what we're gonna be doing next and stuff like as far as discovering new things about Germany. I might go into the food or more the legends or historical things about Deutschland, but I know I have an unhealthy obsession with Germany, so I'll, I'll stop that. I'm kidding. I'm not stopping. Y'all y'all crazy. Anyways, uh, here we go. That's pretty much it. Uh, that was a very long video, but we kind of cruised through that as fast as humanly possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are amazing, and um, hopefully you guys got just as much out of that as I did, and that's all I got to say. Until the next time I see you guys again, take care. Follow me on Discord, subscribe to my channel, and subscribe to my second channel. <laughs> Peace.